Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Uh, back in the Maktaba, and today I'm going to be going through the qism on al lugha on the Arabic language. And uh, one of the most important topics that a Muslim needs to study to be able to understand all of these books is the Arabic language. And uh, what I'm going to look at today, as you can see, it's not a big section, it's quite a small section compared to, for example, fiqh or some of the other sections in the library. However, what's important is the books that are there, you're going to see they're categorized different, differently. So you have, for example, books on singular subjects, like you have an nahu which is grammar. Everyone knows of al ajrumiya This is an explanation by Sheikh Uthaymin. Now, there's a couple of explanations sometimes you need, like a contemporary ex- explanation and maybe a more classical explanation, which is uh, uh, um, a metan here, which is a more uh, an older explanation. So you have the same book, but you have multiple explanations of that book. When it comes to the Arabic language, you have the subjects which are singled out and you have them put together in compilations, which you're going to see in a minute. So, for example, you've got a nahu, which is grammar, you've got a sarf, which is morphology, and you've got a balagha, which is translated often as stylistics. Uh, and then you've got, for example, subjects which are very specific. They look at uh, uh, words, for example, which have the uh, same meaning but different words right we're going to see that as well you have uh, books which look specifically at poetry or not just poetry but for example um, words where poetry is used and then you have books on adab generally speaking so let's have a quick look uh, we'll look at a couple of the books a couple of the selections so for example in Nahu you've got al ajrumi I just showed you that you've also got a contemporary book which is Tatbiq al Nahu and this is Again, a different uslub, a different way in which the book is structured, but it teaches the same topic, nahu. And it's important to have those contemporary books as well as the classical ones. Then you've got, for example, sarf, which is morphology, the same author authored a similar book called Tatbiq al-Sarfi, which is sarf applied. Tatbiq is like the application of sarf. Uh, then you've got a classical book on the same topic on sarf, which is Lamiyatul al-Af'al. Uh, again, this is a book on Sarf by the author of al which is Ibn Malik. We're going to look at that in a minute. That's a book which is taught and studied at the Islamic University of Medina. So this is a poem. That's the other thing you've got. You've got books which come in poem form, like this one. You've got books which come in a type of a nathar or a matan form, which is like I mentioned before, tatbiq or sarfi. Um, then you've got books which are not just a small matan or small text, but it's a larger book covers more topics like this, Jami' al Durus al Arabiya, which covers more uh, points than just, for example, Al Ajrumiya. As you can see, it's a lot bigger than Al Ajrumiya. So, even in the individual topics, you've got books which are small, muqtasar, or summarized, and you've got books which are larger that cover more, more, more of those uh, issues. One of the best books, I think, in Nahu, personally speaking, as a contemporary book that a student can study, is Al Nahu Al Wadih, Fi Qawaid Al Lugha Al Arabiya, right? And they have this for Thanawiya as well as Ibtidaiya, and it's an important uh, topic. Also, as well, another very good book on the similar topic is Balagha, Balagha Al Wadih, the same name. Then you have this book which is uh, explained by Sheikh Uthaymin called Durus al Balagha. Sheikh Uthaymin, as I've mentioned many times before, if you watch the previous library videos, is himself a library. He's explained books on every single topic. That's his explanation of uh, in Nahu. He's got explanation of Alfi ibn, ibn Malik. He's got explanation of Balagha as well. He's got explanations of almost every science and subject, fiqh or aqidah or tawheed or usul al fiqh, mustalah hadith. All of them. This is also a very good book. It's in Balagha. So you have books which are on uh, separate topics. So this is Balagha. This is also Balagha, but you have each science within the science of Balagha, Ilm al Bayan, Ilm al Ma'ani, and Ilm al Badi, separated in separate books, and it gives you more information. So generally speaking, you have those topics which are individual, and those individual topics, whether it's Nahu, whether it's Sarf, whether it's Balagha, whether it's Shi'r or it's poetry, for example, as well, how to do poetry. You have small books, then you have more comprehensive books that cover more issues in each of those subjects. Also, you have books which are classical books, authored in the past, which are mutun to be memorized and studied. And you have contemporary books like the Jami' Durus al-Arabiya and Tatbiq al-Nahu and the like, 
these are contemporary books which add something new uh, to the topic uh, in a more contemporary way. Then you have books on adab, generally speaking, right? And these books on adab, they're more larger collections. Before I go to that, though, it's not possible really to speak about the Arabic language and not speak about uh, al fiya ibn Malik, which is uh, uh, the explanation of Ibn Aqil, which is studied in the Islamic University of Medina. As you can see, it was one of the books which we studied. So there's, you can see the notes from the days of the Jamia in there, even the writings, which I haven't gone back to for a long time. But anyways, what this is one of the main books in Nahu, after you do al ajramiya after you do the Mutimma, after you do, for example, Qatr al nada or after you do, for example, uh, the other books. This is really the Khulasa as it pertains to an nahu It's the reference point that everyone refers to. And it's al fiya because it's 1,000 lines of uh, poetry. I mentioned Adab. Okay, what is Adab? Adab looks at all of these sciences, including the khulas, i.e. the purpose, i.e. the best type of authorship as it pertains to poetry, as it pertains to letters, as it pertains to khutub. It looks at all that together. And there's a couple of books that do that and do that really well. One of them is this book called Kitab Uyun al-Akhbar for uh, Ibn Qutayba, from what I remember. Ibn Qutayba, that's right. And that you'll find a collection of either poems or nathar or uh, khitaba, khutub, or speeches or letters. Uh, you know, from classical times up until uh, fairly recent, not recent as in contemporary, but according to the, for the author. And that's a collection, basically, where you find all types of literature. And there's a few collections like that. Um, Ibn Qutayba, he's got other books as well on like Shi'r and Shu'ara, poets and poetry. And he looks at basically the tabaqat of the poets, who they are, their names, their biography, as well as some of their poetry. Um, and yeah, you'll find that in the books of Adab. Another, I think, important uh, collection is this one, which is to do with Al Amthal. Amthal, as is known, is uh, basically like truisms or maxims of truth, where one thing is compared to something else. It's a short statement, it's uh, succinct in its wording, but in its meaning, it has, there's, there's usually a story. Uh, there's usually a story or something behind it that, that references it. These are books of Amthal as well. This is a collection, uh, Majma al Amthal, it's three volumes, and it's got loads of Amthal, which is again really beneficial. So, you have, for example, you start off by learning Nahu and Sarf and Balaga, Balaga being the last of the sciences that you learn when it comes to the language, and then obviously, if you're able to. For example, like this book, Adab al-Katib, it speaks about how to write, right? So if you're able to, you, you basically, you know, reach a level where you're writing, inshallah, uh, to that level. But anyway, even if you not don't reach that level, you need to have a basic level. And that starts with Nahu, starts with Sarf. And then also to appreciate the language you read in Balagha. That's when you're studying it in Arabic. Well, how do you get to there? How do you... Start even to study al ajrami or at sarf. You have to study the language as a native. And what we have, which I'm going to show you now, is the second section, which is if you're a teacher, you're a learner of the Arabic language, what books you can start with, what books you can use to, inshallah, learn the Arabic language so that you can come to these books and understand them. That's over there. Over here, as you can see, we've got some books which are not in that section, and that's because these are books for learning the Arabic language in the first place if you're a non native. And there's different uh, methods of learning, there's different ways of learning. I'm not going to go into the Medina book is better than the Arabi Ibn Yadayk, or Arabi Ibn Yadayk is better than the Medina book series. We've had that discussion before. Refer back to the videos and you know who we're speaking about. Any case, um, you have the Medina series, which is well known. The Medi this is a Medina Arabic series, which is for learning Arabic language. It's very useful in terms of learning uh, Fusha Arabic or classical Arabic, however they, you want to say it. And you also have other syllabuses which are used. One which was used ages ago, a classical one, is called Kitab al-Asasi. Now, Kitab al-Asasi is very similar to Al-Arabi ibn Yadayk in that it teaches you Arabic from the topic of themes. So, for example, meeting somebody, speaking about your family at the airport, in, at the restaurant, food and drink, buying clothes, jobs, futures, professions, careers, 
and the like. That's how it's organized. That's different to the Medina book series, which is why people usually say, if you want to learn conversational Arabic, study the Arabi Ibn Yadik or Kitab al Asasi. If you want to study grammar, they learn the Medina book series because they believe it only, it doesn't, because it has a different way in which it teaches. The, the, the way in which the Medina book teaches is more in line with the classical way of learning in the sense that it's teaching you uh, how to build up Nahu through the words association and also Sarf, but it's in context. Uh, then you have, for example, uh, books which are taught at universities in the UK. So, for example, you have this type of book which is taught at university, Al Kitab Fi Ta'allum Al Arabiya, which is called The Book. Right, they've taken that from Al Kitab by Al Sabawi, who's the main grammarian, the Nahawi, the Marjit, the reference point for Nahu. Right, but it's called Al Kitab Fi Ta'allum Al Arabiya, it's called The Book in an Arabic language. And as you can see, and this is something which I want to highlight, when you're studying Arabic language as a English speaker, uh, the books that are used at universities in the UK are obviously have a lot of English because you're able to now pick this book up and self-study easier when all the instructions are in the English language. So it teaches you conversational Arabic, but it teach and it also teaches you dialects, right? So regional dialects being Levantine and being Egyptian as well as classical Arabic. But here are classical Arabic, they, re they refer to modern standard Arabic. And like Kitab al Asasi al Arabiya Bain Yadayk, it teaches it based upon theme. So, for example, meeting somebody, introducing yourself, then it goes on to uh, talking about your family, then it goes on to, for example, speaking about, uh, you know, at the airport, in the restaurant, meeting people. And it's got grammar in it as well. So, this is one of the comp books which are used at universities a lot. Um, also, another book used at universities here in the UK is this one called Master in Arabic. I think they use this a lot at Westminster and other universities. Again, as you can see, there's a lot of English in there describing places, for example, but it's got English text. Uh, and again, it's easier to self-study. So it's got, root, it's got grammar, it's got vocab, but it's easier to self-study because it's got English words. If, for example, you're a beginner learner in the Arabic language and you pick up a book like the Medina book syllabus, and it's, there's no English whatsoever, you only see Arabic, then that obviously makes it impossible to study by yourself without a teacher, which is, generally speaking, can be off-putting, especially when you're a learner. Um, so that's why a lot of people prefer, for example, those books or that method. Even al Arabi Ben Yedek doesn't have any English in it. You've got other books which have been translated into English that were originally in Arabic, and this is called the Arabic Treater. This is a book I like a lot, and I recommend it to students to buy. It's because it combines between both. It's got English in it, uh, and it's also got the Arabic text, a bit like Nahu al and uh, 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 al balagat al-Wadha, where it gives you a text, sentences, examples, and it wants you to translate it, and vice versa, after giving you the rules of the book. So these are also... Books. Then you've got books which are for reading and for leisure, but you can translate work on like Qisas and Nabiyin. This is an Arabic learner book on the stories of the prophets. Or for example, you've got books like Hikayat Min al which again, the book has Tashkil, it's Arabic only, but again, you take a passage and you can translate those. So the different types of books you can study as a learner of the Arabic language, not as a person that already knows Arabic language, comes down to, for example, those which are of different levels, has more Arabic, has less Arabic, those which are focused on modern standard Arabic and conversational scenarios, those that focus more on uh, looking at the grammar and the sarf put together with conversations. Another book which is quite good actually, which I've uh, used a bit and you know I recommend I've I, I like myself is called Standard Arabic an, an elementary intermediate course. And again this is a book which uh, originally came from Orientalists and it's got English in it, so it's easy to do. It's got a lot of grammar, and it's a, it's a beginner's book. Why do I say I like these books? Okay, the reason this book is uh, good is because you can pick up, you can study, and it gives you modern standard Arabic. Uh, looks at, for example, uh, different texts, whether they're texts for, to do with newspapers or texts to do with, for example, literature as well. It's also included in that. Uh, then you have other books that you can actually uh, use as you progress. There's Gateway to Arabic, which is good when you're just getting started. 
because it's got the alphabet in there. You can learn how to read, for example, or join, you learn some words, gateway two. It starts to introduce you to grammar as well. So you have, uh, there's a wealth of resources basically. If you want to learn the Arabic language, you're not limited just to one course or to one type of book. Um, but this is going to get you started so you can afterwards access the other books which are only in the Arabic language. There's one more thing I forgot to speak about which is dictionaries. Uh, myself I've got maybe a couple of dictionaries, not as many as I'd like to have, but the main ones is going to be I guess the Hansware dictionary if you're looking at for example Arabic to English you've got the Hansware dictionary which is really useful and then if you're looking at Arabic, Arabic dictionaries only You've got the book called Al Qamus Al Muhit, which is going to be an Arabic Arabic dictionary, uh, which is one of the kind of main small dictionaries that you can have, inshallah. Other than that, then all of this is available digitally as apps nowadays, which you can have on your phone. So instead of carrying, for example, two big dictionaries in your bag, download them on your phone and you've got access to them, inshallah, whenever you need them. So that's it the Arabic language section in the Maktaba consists of two types, the Arabic language for Arabic and you've got the Arabic language for learning the language if you're a non-native, i.e. you're an English speaker. Inshallah, next time we'll speak about another section in the Maktaba, whether it's Tafsir or Fiqh or Hadith or Seerah, Inshallah, I want you to decide. Let me know in the comments below. Let's see if this actually works. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.